Hey everyone, this is Krista Bontrager. I want to thank you for watching today. This is sort of a continuation of some recent videos that I've been doing, taking a closer look at MOPS International, and that's the organization known as Mothers of Preschoolers. And um, I've been sort of working my way through some of their literature, and, and kind of the genesis of this is that I had a number of followers on my Facebook page reach out to me and wanting to know my opinion about MOPS. And I really wasn't that familiar with it in the beginning, other than just having a general familiarity of their ministry. And so it's been, you know, a, a bit of a learning curve. Uh, so I will um, commend to you the interview that we did with Sarah Wilkins. She was a longtime uh, MOPS leader at her church. And then I've been working my way through reviewing some of their materials from 2016 and 2018. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at a recent blog post on the MOPS website that I think uh, really helps to provide some continuing information and context to what's happening there. So the title of this blog post is called MOPS International Statement of Faith. So I'm just gonna read through this, and this might be a, a bit of a lengthier video than I normally do, but it's just because there is so much information to unpack here in this blog post, and I wanna make sure I do it carefully. So let's take a look at this together. MOPS International has been made aware of a new blog and companion podcast posted this week criticizing MOPS theology. And as you can see here, this blog post was published on May the 30th, 2019. We are saddened that these Christian bloggers did not contact us directly with their comments. Solid theology is important to all of us, and we want to honor God's call for unity in the body as we try to understand each other's different points of view and respond to criticism. I think this is a very gracious way of, of starting out the post. And the blog post in question, I'm gonna pull that up here, was from the Theology Gals website. And the title of the blog post is Why Your Church and You, Believer, Should Stop Associating with Mops International. And as you can see here, it's quite a lengthy blog post uh, documenting their case uh, for Mops engaging with false teachers. Now, there was also an accompanying podcast to this blog, and the title of that was it's time to say goodbye to mops international mothers of preschoolers and this podcast can still be accessed online so that's the the blog post in question that is being mentioned here now i'm glad to see that solid theology is important to the mops organization so that's awesome uh, i want to take that on good faith that uh, and, and I think it's also commendable of them that they are willing to respond to criticism and address concerns. So that, too, is, is really, really good. Uh, the post continues, here at MOPS, we believe that Jesus calls us to build a bridge of authentic friendship to moms of young children living life together and meeting felt needs so that we can share with them the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. We are not a traditional Bible study or Christians only club. We offer a safe place for women of all backgrounds to share the hard parts of parenting and ask the hard question regarding our spiritual journeys. I'm glad to see that they have an explicit statement on their website about sharing the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. Um, that's great uh, because that has not been completely clear to me in the previous uh, materials that I've reviewed on my YouTube channel. It would still be wonderful if they would actually offer a definition of what that good news is and what that salvation is, but, but at least this is a clear statement that um, I would interpret as being that's still part of their core values and ethos, so that's, that's great. And as Sarah Wilkins pointed out on our interview, uh, they also say that they're not a traditional Bible study and they're not a Christians only club. They're an outreach organization. They're, they have Christians that attend their meetings and their, their groups are sponsored by churches that adhere to the MOPS statement of faith, but they're not a traditional Bible study. 
However, I would add that they do use the Bible. And so when they use the Bible, I would expect it to be engaged in a way that is faithful to Scripture itself. Now, I get it that they're not diving deep into Scripture. They're not a Bible study per se. But I think as Christians, we all want to share the value of dealing with Scripture in a faithful and and accurate way that is true to what the authors uh, intended. So, um, you know, just kind of asking that question there. All right, let's continue. We do this by equipping thousands of churches across the U.S. and across the world with a variety of tools that lead to Jesus. MOPS curriculum is written by a large team and reviewed by a content advisory panel that is made up of pastors, theologians, and teachers. We strive to create content that is practical, helpful, and full of biblical truth, while at the same time being understandable to women who are new to a faith journey. Well, I think that's wonderful. Um, I'm glad to see they have peer review. Um, I I would like to be invited, I guess, to be a part of their theological staff and peer review. I'm glad to see that they're open to peer review. Um, But I question um, the accuracy of dealing faithfully with biblical truth. They say they want biblical truth, but in many of the materials that I've reviewed, that are for the leaders and for the, the the training of leaders and the discussion guides, I see a lot of very um, unsound biblical exegesis. And it's it, it seems extremely guided um, more by the concerns of the women than by the actual intent of scripture. And so I've detailed that in the, um, an example of that in the Fierce Love video. But I'm glad to see that, that that's something that, that they do value. Our leaders' materials promote discipleship, evangelism, and prayer, all tools for discovering and deepening a relationship with Jesus. The books published through Zondervan are not required for anyone to purchase, but are another way to gently encourage moms outside of the church to walk toward Jesus. Now, I am sure that I have not seen all of the leader's materials, so I want to give them the benefit of the doubt here and believe all things good about MOPS. The the leader's materials that I've reviewed, I don't see that there is a clear instruction of discipleship, evangelism, and prayer. Um, I read through their evangelism training manual, or at least what I think is their evangelism training manual, and I could not find a definition of the gospel. I could not find anything about salvation, sin, forgiveness, the cross, the resurrection, the crucifixion, holiness, um, justification, sanctification, anything like that. Even if we don't use those, those words, I mean, even those ideas, um, a, a repentance of sins, um, sin in general, I, I just... I didn't see that. So maybe there's some materials that I haven't seen. Again, I want to hope all things, but I haven't seen anything that to me reflects of um, discipleship and evangelism um, in the traditional sense. And um, and the books by Zondervan, I've reviewed the Starry-Eyed book. I hope to review um, later this week the, the more recent book um, by Mandy Arioto. So I'll get that review up. So I'll refrain from saying anything about that at this point, but I will say the starry-eyed book, I would dispute that that was really pointing people toward the historical Jesus of the Bible. Um, As I said in my review, that that book is full of New Age ideas and some medieval mysticism. All right, continuing. Last year, more than 10,000 moms reported to us that they had made first-time decision to follow Christ because of their involvement in MOPS. We think that's really good news. I think that's awesome news. I love it that they are so evangelistically oriented. And um, again, based on our conversation with Sarah Wilkins, that was definitely reflected in her experience with MOPS up until 2016 and 2017 and the changes that were implemented at that time. My only question is, we want to be very sure that we are getting the gospel right so we know what we are inviting these moms into. Um, 
I haven't yet seen that in the materials for the leaders that I've seen. Now, I, again, I haven't reviewed every material out there. I've just reviewed the ones that I've had access to. But I would be very curious um, in a survey what these 10,000 moms think that it means to be a Christ follower and how much discipleship uh, is seeping down from the leaders to the, the MOPS community and what is the good news that these, these moms think that they have believed in. Um, what have they been saved from? Is it a stressful life? Is it a difficult marriage? Or is it that they have good news about being saved from their sins? These are all questions that are lingering in my mind. Now let's continue. We want to help them deepen their understanding of Jesus as we continue our, in our partnership with churches and to reach the many other moms who have not yet discovered him. Big amen for me on that. Like, yeah, I am all about trying to disciple people, help point them to a deeper understanding of Jesus. I've been devoted my entire adult life to doing that very thing. I have hundreds of videos on my YouTube for that purpose, to try to help people understand Jesus more. As we listened to the podcast and read the blog, we found it primarily revisiting concerns from 2016, which we thoroughly responded to then and made adjustments where needed. These concerns have been addressed. Now, I'm sure that there's they were probably I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here that those address those concerns were addressed to the leaders. Um, none of the people that are leaders and mops that I have interacted with have shown me those materials where those those things have been addressed and where adjustments have been made. But again, hoping all things, believing all things, as it says in First Corinthians thirteen. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I think what's telling here is that they do recognize and they do admit that there were problems in the rollout in 2016 and that they did have to make some adjustments, Um, that some of the the concerns that were raised by people like Sarah Wilkins and other MOPS leaders um, is valid. Since the bloggers state that they are not involved in MOPS, they don't appear to know this, and their posts this week do not accurately assess MOPS theology, our materials, or our CEO. We ask that anyone who has additional questions contact us directly at this address. We're open to questions even when fellow Christians are responding as ironing sharpening iron, as this allows us to further proclaim the foundation of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the owner of this ministry. I think it's a wonderfully gracious response, and I commend whoever put this post together this press release or whatever you want to call this um, for for that gracious response. I think that's really good. Now I'm going to scroll down here and read Mandy Arioto's response. And again, Mary, Mandy Arioto is the president of MOPS and is the one who took over in 2016 and was part of the rebranding rollout that they did at that time and the author of the Starry-Eyed book. She says, I thought it might be good to chime in here since it is always good to hear from the source, so there is no room for speculation. I was really surprised that the theology gals didn't reach out to talk to me, but instead chose to talk about my beliefs based on secondhand information. So in order to set the record state, here's what I believe. Now I understand what Mandy is saying here about wanting to have a direct conversation, but I also know that when you're a public figure like your public statements to some degree have to stand on their own merit. And while the theology gals comments were probably a little more sharp than I would feel comfortable making, I do think that their core concerns um, have some amount of validity. However, I have been trying in these series of videos to go about this conversation and analysis in a fairly gracious way, I hope I'm achieving that, to point out what I see as questions and concerns, but also allowing for the public statements to evolve, for people to grow, for people to change. And it does seem like um, Mandy has tempered some of her earlier statements. As we see here, she says, I'm a sinner, probably the worst of the worst, I regularly fall short, make mistakes, and desperately need the forgiveness that Jesus offers. I have spent the last 20 years sharing the good news about Jesus with anyone who will listen. I follow the role, I follow the model that Jesus gave us, where he encountered when he encountered someone, 
And then simply by having an experience with Jesus, people were convicted of their sin and then encouraged them to go and sin no more. What I've learned over my 20 years in ministry is that not one person I have met comes to Jesus feeling like they are clean, perfect, or worthy. That is why I strive to help people encounter the hope of Jesus and then encourage them to acknowledge their sin, accept Jesus' forgiveness through his death on the cross, and then go and sin no more. Okay, I haven't yet reviewed her latest book from 2018. So maybe she does that in that book. I honestly cannot say I found that theme in the Starry-Eyed book. I could not find the hope of Jesus, a call to acknowledge people's sin, accept Jesus' forgiveness through his death on the cross, and then go and sin no more, which implies repentance and turning away from sin. I could not find those themes anywhere. I could not find those themes in the evangelism training manual, Share Jesus. I could not find those themes in the module of Fierce Love. Maybe I missed them. And if, if I miss them, please, somebody send me those page numbers, and I will make another video um, explaining my omissions. But I could not find those themes. What I saw was a lack of the use of words, the word sin, uh, many euphemisms for sin that didn't sound like sin. It sounded like the thing that people were wanting salvation from was a difficult life, a difficult marriage, um, struggles with their kids, sleep deprivation, anxiety. Um, I could not find mentions of sin and forgiveness and the cross. So I'm completely open. If I've missed those, somebody please send me those page numbers. If you were at MomCon last year, which is their national conference for mops, you would have seen that in one of the sessions I'd led 3,000 women in a prayer experience that addressed sin and walked them through a process of praying for forgiveness and freedom from the specific sins that they were dealing with. You may prefer to approach this topic with the bad news of sin followed by the good news of a Savior. I don't know anything about this leading of prayer, so I, I can't really comment on, on this event at the MomCon. But yes, Mandy, in general, we need to at some point explain to people what the bad news is, what their sin problem is, so that they know what they're being saved from, saved to the good news. Yeah, in general, we, we have to do that at some point. Number three, as far as who I have quoted in the past, I made a mistake in quoting John Philip Newell, honestly. I wouldn't do it again and didn't understand his theology at the time. Well, that's interesting <laughs> because you just told me that you've spent 20 years in ministry, but then you quoted somebody that you didn't say you didn't understand his theology, but it was a book that was very meaningful to you. Um, and she was mentioning John Philip Newell, and I talk about that in the Starry-Eyed Review. I understand your regret I just am wondering is your regret because so many people commented about this or what because it's highly confusing to me if you've been in ministry for 20 years and you didn't recognize his his theology or his worldview it is so clear and blatant I mean you just got to do like a Wikipedia or Google search to understand what this guy's worldview is so that seems a little odd to me as far as Rob Bell's quote, I quoted where he says the most powerful words we can use are me too, and they were wit written in one of his earlier books before his theology had shifted. The quote had nothing to do with theology, only with how we connect with people. Okay, but there was another quote by Rob Bell, and I think I included this in my review, where she cited Rob Bell's, a very recent book by Rob Bell. So that doesn't quite jive for me, at least. I will tell you that since Starry-Eyed, I tried not to quote from controversial figures who don't align with traditional Christian teachings because as my leadership grows, I am aware that my words have more weight and I don't want to be misunderstood or assume that I align with that teaching. Okay, but now all you're telling me is that you don't quote from these things publicly. You're not making it completely clear what your personal views are. Now, you sort of allude to it by saying, I don't want people to assume I align with that teaching. But do you align with that teaching? And you're just not quoting it publicly? Or are you saying that you don't align with the teaching of Rob Bell? 
because a lot of your books and a lot of the statements in the MOPS materials sound very much like an echo of a lot of things that Rob Bell says. So that's that's a little confusing to me, but okay, again, I want to believe all things here and take her to word that maybe some of these things she doesn't actually align with in her personal life. Okay, let's continue. Number four, in response to who I, do I think Jesus is, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the risen Messiah, and the only path to salvation. Awesome. Glad to see that very clear statement about who Jesus is. Thank you, Mandy. I appreciate that. Keep keep that going. Mops International is a high-impact ministry that has been doing kingdom work for over 45 years. We spread the message of Jesus in over 60 countries around the globe. See transformation happen on a daily basis where moms come to Jesus and that their kids and husbands do as well. To question the work of MOPS in advancing the kingdom of God is to seriously misunderstand our ministry. MOPS is an outreach organization that brings together women under the common experience of motherhood and to share the message of Jesus with the ultimate goal of connecting them to the local church where they can experience lifelong faith formation. This so resonates with me because I work for a ministry that also tries to spread the message of Jesus all over the world, but in a different realm. Rather than bringing the gospel to mothers, we try to bring the gospel to scientists. And we do this by using the language of science. So I am completely sympathetic with how you are trying to advance the kingdom of God at MOPS. And I appreciate your heart. And um, I just think that if this is the clarity that you're showing right here, Mandy, about about what your work, what you're doing in your work, I wish your books had that same level of clarity. I so it's obvious to me you're capable of communicating clearly, but the materials in MOPS themselves are so vague and so general that I'm often left with so many questions. But this kind of clarity here is extremely welcome and appreciated, and does it does help. MOPS provides our leaders with training in how to do relational evangelism, and we present the gospel at Christmas and Easter along with one-on-one over the course of the year. Hundreds of thousands of women who have ever ex- who have experienced MOPS will tell you how their life changed because MOPS was a safe place to talk about faith. That's great. I would love to see those videos. Hey, if somebody at MOPS headquarters is watching this, I'll gladly do a review of the videos on evangelism that you present people. And if if you've got it nailed, I'll be the first to like say, hey, they've got this, they've got it nailed. Here's the gospel, it's clear, it's there, it's all there. Uh, send me those videos, I'd love to review them. Um, but, I, and again, I resonate with this and I think the ministry of MOPS, the idea behind it is fantastic. I believe in this, but the the materials themselves are so confusing and vague about what we are calling women into, that's my problem. My problem isn't with the vision of the ministry or the doctrinal statement. Um, My problem is what's actually in the training materials themselves and the lack of clarity in Mandy's books. But again, I haven't read the newest one yet, so that'll be forthcoming. So I wanna make that clear. Okay. Regarding the number of moms who started a relationship with Jesus, it is disturbing to me that this podcast inferred that some of these women might not really be saved. I think we need to always encourage women to keep going deeper with Jesus and trust him to convict their sincerity. As noted in our statement of faith, we firmly believe salvation is given by God's grace to those who repent and believe in Jesus Christ. That is great. And I do not at all want to insinuate that some of these women might not be saved. But I do know from 25 years of ministry experience and talking to a lot of people that when we don't explain the gospel clearly to them up front, they don't know what they're getting into. There's a higher percentage of people falling away from their faith. There's a higher percentage of people saying, I'm not sure I was ever really saved in the first place. And I think that there is advantages to explaining things up front, that they understand what our distinctives are. The Apostle Paul, yes, he used outside sources to try to build a bridge, but he never minced words about what he was inviting people to. 
And I think we have to have clarity about what we are inviting people into. It's not just a vague relationship with Jesus or we want to give them an experience. We're inviting them to have a relationship with the creator of the universe, but that is done through scripture. So even though MOPS itself is not a Bible study, it uses the Bible to try to build a bridge. But when it does that, it should be dealing with scripture in a careful and faithful way. When we don't do that, we set these women up for much, a much difficult, a much more difficult road ahead of them when they aren't really clear on the front end as to what Christianity is about. The content that MOPS puts out is deeply biblical and reviewed by a content advisory panel made up of theologians, pastors, leaders, and our board. We provide a broad range of content to an interdenominational cross-section of churches who decide which pieces to use. Okay, I, I honestly, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt here, Mandy, but I'm struggling. I, I don't see that the materials are deeply biblical. I, I just don't. I, I see that they're superficially biblical, and in many cases, many of the points that the or the ways that Scripture is used, the points that it's trying to be used to make, don't aren't really connected to Scripture. I don't know who these theologians are that are advising you, but you it it's it is very difficult for me, as a woman, as a mom, as a theologian for two and a half decades to know how a theologians could be advising you to use scripture this way. That seems really confusing to me. I'm going to try to state that as graciously as I can. Um, again, if you would like me to come be on your advisory board for theology, I would love to do that. I would love to be invited. But this is, I, I just can't, get behind the 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 accuracy of the statement that the mops materials are deeply biblical i don't even know what to say to that because they're just not final point number eight lastly i've built my career on encouraging women and attempting to be a follower of jesus who represents him well many of the quotes you have attributed to me were not well researched and not shared in context. As believers, we can do better. The only way we are going to woo a weary world to Jesus is by trusting in the Holy Spirit and cheering each other on as we all attempt to do the same work, even if we, even if our approaches differ. And I get it, Mandy, you want to paint the picture that these women are just quibbling over denominational differences because they're reformed. I am not reformed. Um, and so I don't see these as quibbling over denominational differences. And even though I might not go as far as the theology gals in some of my critiques, I think that some of their critiques were fair. And based on the public statements that have been made by mobs and to their leaders, I think the critiques are fair in, in many cases. Now, that's not to say that you haven't spent your whole adult life being in ministry and trying to draw others to Jesus. I mean, that's to be commended. But I think that we, you also have to be careful in not um, just chalking this up and painting a picture that this is just about denominational differences. I don't think that's the case. And again, I want to just give a big commendation to this blog post. I think it's very thoughtful. I appreciate the spirit in which it's written. I hope that I have um, I'm trying to keep in that spirit, keep a sense of openness, and I will continue to review materials. And if you're out there and you're with MOPS and you want to send me materials that you have access to, or you feel like I've mischaracterized things, send me that, send me that documentation. I would welcome that as I continue to do this research. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.